Let your heart be troubled. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I need to let you know Pastor Gall is not here. Most of you probably already heard, but he had a heart attack and he's in Springfield and uh, they'll be doing some, I think it's called a angiogram and put in some stints and that. We haven't heard the rest of it. Ruth told me uh, to pass that on and uh, also I would remind you of the youth breakfast in the uh, gymnasium and uh, just don't get too anxious to go during the service <laughs> as you smell it and uh, also uh, take a look at the angel tree toy drive for fish display uh, and then uh, you got this little brochure about Haiti uh, be sure and read through it and Pastor Gall's adult Bible class will not be held today uh, because he's not here. And I, as soon as this service is over, I will not be greeting anyone as I need to take off for St. John's Louisville, where I was scheduled to preach this morning. So, uh, you, uh, by the way, you can come back to the next service and you'll hear a different sermon <laughs> delivered by Galen. <laughs> so. So uh, you can get two services this week. And then there's a special event that needs your talents and expertise on November the 24th at Saturday at 9 a.m. You're urged to come and help decorate the church. So please put that on your calendar. Let us begin our worship service. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Blessed, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From their labors. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As we celebrate God's salvation and remember the cloud of witnesses who have gone before us, we are reminded that all saints, both living and dead, have led sinful lives. Even though we are God's children, what we will be has not yet appeared. We remain contaminated by sin and evil until Jesus returns. As we come before God, let us consider our sinfulness and ask God for his forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we are all guilty and ashamed of our sinful thoughts, words, and actions. We have not always lived as your children. We have often failed to seek peace. We have not been pure of heart. Forgive us, renew us, and bless us so that we may rejoice and be glad to be counted as your children. God has lavished his love upon us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die and rise again for us all. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, will be our shepherd and he will guide us to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. As they called an ordained servant of the risen Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are God's children, and ours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your namesake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And you can wash away in me. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Joyful, joyful, we adore. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading, and also the sermon text for this day, is found in Revelations chapter 7. St. John wrote, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb is in the midst of the throne, who in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let us Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Let the gold godly exalt in glory let them sing for joy on their beds to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to execute on them the judgment written this is honor for all his godly ones praise the Lord Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading for this day is found in John, the first epistle of St. John, chapter 3, beginning of verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that It did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is found written in the fifth chapter of St. Matthew, beginning of verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he, that is Jesus, went up to the, on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with singing for all the saints, and today let us just sing verses 1, 2, and 3, and verses 7 and 8.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may his Spirit open up our hearts and minds to his word. Amen. Our text is the first reading is found in Revelation 7. You may be seated. For a moment, I'd like you to close your eyes and, and in your mind envision a large crowd. Maybe such as those that gather at the baseball games or a convention of some sort. And you see many, many, many people. But you notice that every one of them are wearing white. All of them are wearing white. And, and you wonder, who are these? Who are clothed in white. And if you look real hard. You might see. Some of the members of this congregation. Who was called from this life. In this past year. You might see a grandparent. A brother or sister. Mother, father. A friend. And if you look close, you might even see Adam and Eve and Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Peter, Paul, King David. You might even see that man who hung on the cross beside Jesus. You might even see, if you look closely, even yourself maybe being in that crowd one day. This crowd is without number. It is made up of people who believed in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Our text says, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people, languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice. He's saying that there was people from every nation, the Jewish people, among from the Jewish people, and from the Afghans, and from the Iranians, and from uh, Brazil, and from America, and Canada, and, and they were all different nationalities. And it was an awesome vision. And one of the things he noticed, that there was no conflict among them. They all we're united in a oneness. Well, that's just not the way it is in this sinful world, is it? When we look at our world today, there's nothing but conflict. And, and there's many problems. We find that there's brokenness in families. There's hatred and bitterness. And all those things that God despises. And oneness in our nation just does not seem to be a possibility. I know there are people who believe that if we just accept everybody, then everything will be fine and we'll all be one and we'll all become one happy family in this world. But they don't understand the power of sin and what it does to mankind. And especially what it does to mankind without faith in Jesus Christ who came into this world to rescue us from a life that only leads to destruction. And yet, in John's vision, the reality, there is a oneness. There is unity. And we're told they were singing, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all of the angels, those who are sent forth from God, to watch over his children and to carry out his messages to others. We're standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before God saying, Amen, it is so. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever. Amen, it is so. They were saying that salvation belongs to God. The angels were excited about what God 
had done for sinful mankind. They were so excited, even when you look back in Scripture and you see when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The angels appeared unto the shepherd and they gave praise and glory to God. For the wonderful gift that he gave to mankind. So that one day they could be reunited with God. And the reason mankind needed this Savior and this salvation is because of sin. Did you remember the first words I read just a moment ago? It said, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. What does that mean? Salvation belongs to God. It means that you and I and no other person in history had anything to do with our salvation. It was all about God and what he did for sinful mankind. We can't earn salvation. We don't deserve salvation. There's nothing in us that makes us worthy of salvation. And we didn't even confront God. There's no human in history who ever went to God and says, You know, people are living in such an evil and a terrible way, God. You've got to do something to help us. Hey, how about sending your son to die for us? Mankind gave no advice to God. He in love for you and for me and for all people had a plan to rescue us from sin, from death, from eternal destruction. He had a plan to make it possible for us to live in a new way. And that plan was all through his son Jesus, the Lamb, who gave himself as a sacrifice for all. God's salvation is a gift to mankind. The Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was willing to do whatever it took to rescue us from a terrible fate of eternal destruction in hell. God desires the death of no evil person. His desire is that all people would come into the knowledge of truth and be saved. And Jesus, our Savior, came into our world and lived a perfect life. And he was willing to die on the cross and be forsaken of his own father. And then to rise victoriously from the grave, assuring us that in him we have full cleansing of all sin. That his blood has atoned for the sins of all. And you and I are saved purely by God's grace. The most we can do is come to God and offer him our sins. And he gives us his grace. And by the power of the Holy Spirit in faith. Who works through the word and in our hearts. We can receive that gift. Though we never deserve it. It is a gift of grace. And when we have that grace of Jesus in our hearts, his forgiveness and his cleansing, we live differently. We begin to live as God's children. Not to get salvation, but because we love the God who has rescued us. And who has given us a new life in Jesus Christ. We thank God for what he has done for us. As we look at that crowd of those who are robed in white, the elder asked uh, who these were. And the answer was, these are the ones coming out of great tribulation. Those who stand before the throne of God are people who live in life and who experienced tribulation. And in our gospel reading, we heard Jesus said, Blessed are you when people persecute you. And the reason they're going to persecute you and me as Christians is because they hate Jesus. Jesus says they will hate you without cause. And there's a cost for walking with Jesus in faith. 
Because the world is opposed to the things of God. The world is influenced by the power of Satan. But when Jesus comes into our life, our lives change. And he gives us the courage and the strength to live in a different way. I just got a new Voice of Martyrs magazine and, and it was talking about people in Vietnam and that uh, what they're going through as Christians, how their lives are uh, threatened just because they're a Christian, how people are thrown into jail because they tell other people about Jesus. And you and I as Christians who have lived in America where we experience so many freedom might want to just scratch your head and say, well, how can that be? Well, all we got to do is start listening to the news of our day, don't we? Are Christians being persecuted in America and is it becoming more evident as days go on? Why do people hate Christians? Is, is not it true that Christians are people, not that they're sinless, but they care about other people. They want to help other people. They want to please their Savior in the way that they live. And yet, they can be hated. But we need to understand, anyone who is not a Christian is influenced by the power of Satan who despises and hates God. And we're told that those who stand before the throne of God are people who have gone through great tribulation, though there are some saints who have not. But many have, and most of us will experience this. And it, again, you think of uh, people uh, who have a faith in Jesus, even in the United States, I just heard. People who have a faith in Jesus and express that and stand on strong conservative principles can be fired from their job. We think, how can that be? We might say it's unfair. We might make us angry. But maybe we better step back and ask ourselves, isn't that a sign we belong to Jesus? He says, you will be persecuted. It's going to happen. But that's okay. One woman had said, or <clears throat> excuse me, that um, I lost my place, if you would believe that. Uh, she spoke of how she was persecuted, and yet she held no hatred or bitterness toward those who persecuted her. And the reason is Christians know that people do what they do because they are under the influence of Satan. And it is because God's Holy Spirit lives in us and gives us the courage and the power. We're willing to be persecuted if it's for Christ. We're saints. How many of you feel like saints? Sometimes I, I look at myself and say, I can't be a saint. Not according to uh, the world standards, but we are saints. How many of you love Jesus? I think you'd all raise your hand, right? How many of you know that Jesus died for you and paid the debt of your sin? How many of you believe that you're forgiven? Hey, you're a saint. That's the only way we're going to get into heaven. We're all saints. Sainthood is not conferred upon us by the church. It's not something we earn. It's given to us by the grace of God. And as you read the scriptures, you find that Paul in some of his letters will say, to the saints at, like Ephesus or Corinth or uh, other places. And then you go on and see all the problems he talks about in the church, but yet he called them saints. Saints are people who have faith in Jesus and who know that they are forgiven. And sometimes we have not stood up for Christ as we ought. Because we didn't want to be persecuted or made fun of. 
And if that's happened to you, God doesn't hate you. As you take it to him, he says he'll forgive you. John wrote it this way, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The good news is, as saints, we got a glorious future to look forward to, don't we? And sometimes as Christians, and especially as we get older in life, sometimes we look forward to it with anticipation the moment that God will take us from this life into a life that is going to be glorious. Saints are people who have had their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb, and this is what their future looks like. It says, Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them in His presence. They will hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun will not strike them, in, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb, that is Jesus, in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe every way, away every tear from their eyes. And in Revelation 21, it continues, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall be the, there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And to that we can say thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Great things he has done, so love the world. He gave us his Son. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in this world we are often overwhelmed by difficulties of life, yet you have promised that in your heavenly kingdom there will be no more hunger or thirst, no more scorching heat, and no more tears. Strengthen us to keep turning to you in the midst of struggle, for you say, blessed are the poor in spirit. Lord, death remains a curse until Christ comes again. On this All, Day, uh, all Saints' Day, we remember all who have died in the faith. We ask your resurrection comfort for the families and friends of Carolyn Barnes, Jeanette Bledsoe, Carolyn Brash, Joyce Conyers, Francis Eden, Thomas Kester, Leroy Mellendorf, Shirley Neoff, Donald Prosser, Eugene Stephen, Betty Tabbert, Lloyd Tarrant, Albert Weber, and Gertrude Winter. For you say, blessed are those who mourn. Lord, 
This world is filled with power-hungry, prideful people who seek to rule the earth without any thought of you or care for your creation. Keep us faithful to your kingdom so that we do not run in after the false gods of power and prestige. For you say, blessed are the meek. Lord, send healing to all who are sick, injured, and recovering. Remember all of those who are listed in the worship folder. And be with Pastor Gall and bring healing to his body and help the doctors to do whatever is necessary to bring that about. We commend this to your care. And we ask that you would be with all others within the congregation and our friends and neighbors uh, who are facing various kinds of afflictions in their bodies. Also, Lord, encourage those who struggle to belong in our society, including addicts, immigrants, refugees, those with mental and physical disabilities, and the poor, for you say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For you shall be saved. Lord, we live in a world of cruelty and indifference. But you have called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light so that we might love our families and friends, our neighbors and enemies. Cheer the hearts of all who show mercy to others. For you say, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Lord, protect those who cannot protect themselves, including children, the elderly, and those with disabilities. For you say, blessed are the pure in heart. Lord, break and hinder the plans of Satan, for he always seeks division, war, and conflict in this world. Raise up those who will work for reconciliation and harmony, for you say, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. In the hymn that we sing, we sing verse 1 and then you sing verse 4 and then verse 3.
May God bless you all with a great day and greet one another with the peace of Christ and I'll see you the next time I'm here in a couple.